And now, our feature presentation. He who believe in me, though he die, yet shall he live again. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Man that is born of a woman has but a few days and is full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut it down. He fled also as a shadow and continued not. We brought nothing in this world, but it's certain we carry nothing out. The Lord gave. The Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. And as we continue the program, we just want to sing the, the first hymn here, To God be the glory, great things he have done. So love he the world that he gave us his son. We let his life an atonement for sin and open the life gate that we may go in. To God be the glory. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So long be the world that he gave us his son. Who eat his life and atonement for sin and open the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory, great things He has done. Oh, perfect redemption, the Great things he has done. 
1 Corinthians chapter 15, reading from verses 49 to 58. And this will be read by Maurice Marish, grandson. No, this is not Maurice. Uh, my nephew is, came in from the States last night. And as we have borne the image of the hurty, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this, this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall we be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 58 and last. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Believe that Jesus died and rose again. Even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall raise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. 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 Again. The cast is small, that's why you're seeing me up here again so quickly. Um, I'm Leroy, this is my brother Robert. We drew straws and I'm going first. Good morning everyone, and thank you for... Yes, good morning. <laughs> and thank you for joining us as we pay our last respects to, and give thanks for the life of our dear departed Maskin. Restrictions to the size of public gatherings caused by the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic has unfortunately prevented many family members and well-wishers from attending this service, but we thank all of whom are here, as well as those who will join us via online option. Kenneth Washington Morris was born on Monday, June 10, 1935, here in Danvaspen District, St. Thomas, the mother Isolyn Finn, that is being put to the verse behind today and later Morris, and Sigismund Morris. Ken Maskin was the second child and only son for his mother, who was affectionately called Audrey, but widely mispronounced Audrey. He was the eldest of four children for his parents. Ken's older sister, affectionately called Punce, was raised by her maternal grandmother elsewhere in this district. Maskin's mother, who was born in Manchester and was 31 years old at his birth, was a practicing Christian and so young Ken and his younger siblings, Inez, Catherine, affectionately called Blossom, and Rose, all attended church services every Sunday at the nearby City Mission Church. They also had to return to night services on Sundays. This upbringing explains why he insisted that his own children attend church every Sunday at Pastor Burnett's church, incidentally. And also explains maybe why he never went with us perhaps because he felt that he had attended church enough as a youngster. Ken, as he was called by his parents, siblings and peers when young, attended a basic school held at the City Mission Church and later attended what has since become the Prospect Primary School in Danvers Pen, but which was at a different location then. A bit of background which explains his later um, career path. At this time in the 1940s, the school system in Jamaica and in rural areas in particular was still guided by the 19th century colonial practice of educating children to fit quote-unquote their station in life. 
Schooling emphasized skills that prepare children for eventual employment as estate workers. In addition to basic reading, writing, arithmetic, religious lessons and geography, boys were given training in agricultural practices and other manual arts and girls received lessons in sewing and domestic sciences. Maskin excelled at school, had great penmanship better than mine all his life and took to the mechanics aspect of skills training with gusto. This would later serve to guide his professional working life as an adult. He had a child that was typical of rural life in Jamaica at the time, swimming in the very nearby river behind us here, riding horses, racing his father's mule named Daisy, and generally getting into boyhood mischief. His sister Ines, two years his junior, remembers that he particularly enjoyed shooting birds with a slingshot when young and was good at it to the point that they would regularly clean, salt and roast these birds that he shot. She also recalls him doing typical brotherly stuff, such as catching lizards and tying them to sticks that he would then use to scare her. She would call for her mother, who the children, my dad and not his siblings, curiously called OG as well, who would then call him by his full name on those occasions, not Ken. Kenneth, leave your sister alone. Young Ken proved to be quite industrious and used to speak fondly about a neighbor, Mars Oscar, who lived right next to her here who would encourage him to save his money and to get as much of an education as he could. He took those lessons to heart and would diligently join community partner savings plans and he put his savings to good use in the days before he formally joined the bank, buying property while a very young man, much younger than me. A measure of how responsible young Ken was is that his parents left for England to make a better life for themselves in the early 1950s. Ken, who was then his, in his late teens, was left in charge of his younger siblings, Inez, by then a mid-teenager, and Blossom and Rose, both younger than 10 years old. Aunt Inez expresses how selfless and loving Ken later was to readily agree to raise her two children, Barry and Pauline, when she left them at ages four years old and less than one year old, respectively, to migrate to England. She says that she is so grateful to him for, quote, looking after her and her children and raising them as his own, unquote. So much so that Maskin's son, Roy, <laughs> recalls that as a youngest child in the household of children at the time, it wasn't until he was around five years old that he consciously became aware that Barry and Pauline had different surnames and were in fact his cousins and not his brother and sister. Another measure of Maskin's character and bearing as a young man is that calling someone Mass, which is part of a mister, was common at the time in rural Jamaica but was usually reserved for older men. He was called Maskin from he was a late teen. When he took to raising his nephew and niece, Barry and Pauline, in his early twenties, they called him Maskin as they heard everyone else doing. So when he started his own family later on, his children called him and our mom, <coughs> Maskin and Miss Halley respectively as they heard their whole cousins do. As others this, I know I seem to others, it felt perfectly natural to us as that is what most persons call him for most of his adult life. Orintia, also known as Halle, my mom, was his ex-wife and mother of five of his children. She lived in St. Catherine with her mother's side of the family and met him while visiting her dad, Edward Worrell, here in Danversville, St. Thomas, as a teenager. Ali briefly attended school with, with Maskey and sister Catherine, who I mentioned before is called Blossom, during those visits. She remembers, that is Ali, seeing him in the community riding his bicycle, which was a big thing then, and eventually met him through her interactions with Blossom when she was around 17 years old. She became pregnant with their first child, sitting right there, <laughs> Everton, before his sister Inez left for England. All five of their children were born whilst they live at the Morris family home in Danversville. Before they moved, the family of nine, seven children and themselves, to Springfield in St. Thomas. Ali remembers Maskin as a good provider who loved his children. No one could approach them without his approval. He was also very kind to everyone who needed his help. Unquote. A young Maskin took every opportunity to further his education and took extra lessons in the evenings at the Prospect School in Danversville. His natural affinity for things mechanical became evident early on and he started working at the nearby Surge Island Sugar Factory at 16 years old. 
he applied himself there, taking advantage of formal and informal training opportunities that the company afforded him, both locally and overseas. He started, uh, he started as an entry-level mechanic and left there 15 years later at age 31 as the factory's mill engineer. Sister Ines clearly remembers helping to wash and starch the so-called Sea Island khaki uniform that he used to wear to work then. When he worked the day shift, his siblings, spouse Ali, and even the older children I'm sure ever did it. Remember taking the trek, making the trek to Serge Island and back, taking lunch for him at work. Maskin was blessed with blue eyes and a certain charisma. I could have done well with those. <laughs> but his sisters, Ines and Blossom, said that Maskin was always popular with the ladies, but that his sisters were his first loves. He was protective of and very supportive to them. Blossom relates that Ken was nine years older than her and that in many ways he was more of a father to her than a brother, especially after their parents left for England. She recalls that she boarded out in the community of Yalas whilst going to school and that every Monday morning she would ride with him on his bike via the Belvedere Road where he would leave her to catch a bus to Yalas and he would continue on to work at Goodyear. Blossom's daughters Yvette and Lydia recall regularly going to visit their uncle Ken at his home in Springfield. Yvette recounts that on those visits she felt, quote, fully like family. Also that she could go anywhere in the house that the other children could and that if anyone ever saw her during those <laughs> visits, they would have likely thought that she was one of his children. And here I hand over to Robert. Good morning, good afternoon. His sister Blossom believes that she and her brother Ken were especially close because being the last of his sisters, to migrate to England, she lived the longest with him. She remembers living with him at the house in Dandrespen, along with himself and his spouse, Ali, and the children, Barry, Pauline, Everton, Dorrit, Robert, after they were born. She remembers being pregnant with her first child, Hivet, while Ali was pregnant with Maskin's third child, myself. And our masking chastised mommy, saying, Holly, you walk bad with the belly, which led her to do her best not to waddle, he said. After 15 years at Surge Island Sugar Factory, Maskin, as he himself told the tale, left the job to go to the newly built Goodyear Tire Factory for a, demo for a demolition job title, but more money, demotion in his title. Maskin worked at Goodyear for almost 30 years to the day, joining in September 1966 and taking early retirement at age 61 in September 1996. The factory closed its doors less than one year later. Maskin was a legend at Goodyear, partly because he was there from its inception to its closing, and such and as such, everyone who ever worked there would have known him. Partly because he was maintenance, then production foreman, then night shift superintendent, but mainly because he had such a strong personality. Whether he was liked or not, he could not be ignored when in a room. Everyone who contributed information to the preparation of this eulogy kept repeating a common theme of Maskin, being a strict disciplinarian, a proud man, having a commanding personality, a born leader, undaunted by others, positive, he's protective of his family, kind to a fault, industrious, and a well-regarded engineer who loved imparting what he knew to others. Surely, he was all that and more. The children who he raised also believed that he was more strict than he needed to be with them, did not need to involve the boys who he raised in so much farming just because he loved it, was too quick with the strap 
too slow with expressions of affection, etc. Maskin was certainly a man of extremes. His flaws were just a magnified, as magnified as the things that he did incurable well. He was a man that lived his life on his own terms. He rode the biggest, loudest British bike that he could find. Not because he couldn't afford to drive a car, but he just loved bikes and could not care less what others thought. True to his character, he simply declared one day, when he was about 63 years old, that he couldn't bother cranking the 1960s design Triumph bike anymore. And that was getting too heavy. A few weeks later, he bought a Toyota SUV. You could have knocked his children over with a feather, but that was his way. Those of us who have part of his DNA flowing through our veins as his children, nieces, nephews, grandsons, that he helped to raise and his siblings all chose to reflect at this time on the man that was such a momental force in our lives. A man that offered to the boys who he raised the example of being a man's man, a father who went to work and brought home the bread, one who tilled the soil and literally repeated, reaped the fruits of his labor, a physically large man with a booming voice used in equal measure to discipline as in loud laughter, a man that frequently said to his children that there's nothing named can't and infected them with his own can-do attitude. A man that did much good for many without fanfare or seeking of praise. A man still before his time who insisted on raising seven children as a single father when his marriage broke. A man who in the latter years of his life read his Bible diligently and today gives us hope that he merely rests. We do not seek to make Ken Morris larger or better in debt than he was in life. Yet his good characteristics were great, so he deserves and has our respect, appreciation, and love. We miss you, Mas Ken. You have left an indelible mark on most of whom you came into more than casual contact with. And we will honor your memory by living our best, proud and strong, just as you were. Not a day passed by, Dad, that you don't cross my mind. Not all of you departed when you left this earth behind. In my heart, there is a place that only you can hold, filled with loving memories more priceless than gold. I know you still hear me, Dad. So please, know this is true, that most things I am today is all because of you. Masken, may God have mercy on your soul. May you rest in peace. And may our memories of you be an eternal blessing. God bless you all. And this time on the program, we're going to pray for the family. But we're going to ask you all to stand as we sing before we pray, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty. I wish I have some good singers here this morning. Where they are. Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty. Blessed 
In the name of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, we want to thank you, O God, for who you are, a loving Father, one who loves the family. You care for us, O oh God. You give us life to live, limited because, O oh God, we are falter, we fail you from the very beginning. But nevertheless, O oh God, you love us. And because of that love you have for us, O oh God, this morning, we pray earnestly for the Maris family. Remember them in your mercy. Band them together, O oh God. Help them, O oh God, to love and serve each other best. Help them, O oh God, as they walk together, they will have good understanding. Cover them, O oh God, as they go from different places, making life together. I pray your mercies, your blessings upon them. I pray, O oh God, that they will be strong and firm family members one with another. Let your peace abide with them. Help them, O oh God, to have hope in you. For those that are saved, O oh God, continue to keep them in the ministry. Yes, but for those who are not, O oh God, I pray you draw them in now. Because it might be later than what we think. Hear my cry on their behalf, O oh God. I place them in your hands. And I tell you thanks. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Just before we go to the interment, I just want to leave just maybe a few words to what belong. And these words are taken from the book of Philippians chapter 1 and read from, from verse 21. He said, for me to live is Christ and for me to die is gain. What am I saying to us today while we are let living? We must be living for something. And who are we living for? This great apostle by the name of St. Paul was a man who realized how great God is and one who preached the gospel without no respect. He lived a life of sacrifice. So he declared as he was writing these letters to the Philippians church. He said, for me to live is Christ. So while we are yet living, we need to live for something. 
And I asked the question this afternoon, who are we living for? But Paul declared, for me to live is Christ. Let us live for Christ. Because a day coming, we all will need him. You might not need him at this spare moment, but the hour coming, we all need him. So he said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But one of these days, we will realize how important it was for while we are let alive to live for Christ. Because after death, there comes the judgment. And we have to face it with reality. So when you leave this earth, it's not you don't last nothing. You gain. And why you gain is whatever seed you sow, that's what we're going to reap. So if we sow in righteousness, we shall sow righteousness. We sow to the flesh, we shall have the flesh reap corruption. Let us just at this time. And to remember the homegoing service of Maskin, a strong person, man who make life worth, one who remember the family, one who stand up as a true soldier, and whatever he done, he do it to his best. He never, never lose a battle in a simple way. Because he was a strong fighter. What he said when he speaks, he speaks like a man. I want to encourage the young men today, when you stand up to speak, speak like a man. Roll your voice and make your voice be men as you go through life. May God bless you today and I pray continually for the family. Band yourself together. Live for one another. I have not seen some of them. Remember some of all of them because all of them come to Sunday school. But I can make sure everyone being Sunday school on Sunday morning. And there was a bright student. I remember, Eva was a bright student in Sunday school. I don't know if he's still bright in church, <laughs> but he was a bright student. Remember, remember all the golden texts. <laughs> I hope he's carrying it through still. And I hope he's sharing with the family. Share the golden texts. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That those who believe it in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But those were very good days. Amen. Young people have respect in those days. I don't know if it's still first go through our society, but when I evaluate the society, we have lost that taste. Yeah. But nevertheless, we who are here, we can make a difference. Amen. Amen. We can make a difference. Amen. So I want to wish you all best. I want to prove and show to you that while you live, live for Christ. While you die, it is gain, eternal life will be yours. Amen. Don't make it say, depart from me, I know you're not. Don't be like the five foolish virgin. Be in church every day. But at the end of the day, the lamps went out and there was no oil in the lamp. Trying to find out how to get some oil from those who were ready. But the answer to them, go to those that shall and buy for your own. Salvation belongs to every person. It's an individual blessing. Every man must have it for himself. When the bridegroom cometh, he shall behold the bridegroom cometh. Go to meet him. Those who are ready, they went to meet him. At the end of the day, the five ones went in to the marriage supper. They went and buy oil. Yes, they get oil. But guess what happened? It was too late for them. And at the end of the day, when they get a knock at the door, they heard, depart from me. I know you not. My brothers and sisters and friends, make it now before it's too late. Don't wait until you hear, depart from me, I know you're not. God bless you. For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. God bless you, and his soul rest in peace. Thank you very much. We're not going to the next session, the internment. We're going to ask that the pallbearers, you go to the casket now. We're going to go to the, the resting place.
Thank you.